Grace is ours and peace from God our Creator and our Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning. It's good to see you all. Welcome to this service of worship. We are glad to be together, to gather in the name of Christ. A special welcome to any of you who are visiting or maybe haven't been here in a while. We are so glad to have you. I welcome you, invite you to stay for lunch so that we can better greet you and uh, get to know you a little bit. Uh, there's a card uh, there in your pew rack if you would find that welcome and fill it out for us so we know you're here. Uh, we'd, we'd love to have you stay and be with us. Thank you. Special greeting to Suzanne Rushworth, who's bringing our message today, and look forward to hearing from her. Thank you so much for allowing God to use you to bring us the message today. Uh, happy to have that happen. Uh, you can see from the announcements, there will be a session meeting following worship, uh, following lunch and worship. So uh, we'll be meeting this afternoon about 12.30. And next Sunday, we look forward to celebrating our Presbyterian women, having them uh, be part of the service next week, and I believe they are also providing lunch for us. So we look forward to celebrating that group and uh, welcome you to join us for worship next Sunday, especially. Um, also, just... Uh, some committee meetings coming up. Christian Ed will be meeting September 8th. Um, I don't know about others at this time, but uh, just be looking for those. Are there any other announcements for us this morning? Thank you. I, ha I have that down and didn't mention it. Congregational meeting next Sunday for the purpose of electing um, members to the officer nominating committee, so uh, we'll do that uh, immediately following worship. And uh, thank you, Rick. Anything else? All right. Welcome. Let's worship God.
Good morning. Today's Old Testament reading comes from the Psalms and is very familiar. You will actually hear it again this morning in the anthem. When a scripture is familiar, we often tell ourselves, oh, I've, I've heard this before. But let me challenge you this morning to listen with fresh ears uh, to Psalm 23. Suzanne will mention later that maybe even listen to the psalm as a prayer. The 23rd Psalm, it may be found in the Old Testament on page 474 in your pew Bible. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
If we say we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves, for we all have sinned and fall short of God's glory. We have sinned not only as individuals, but we sin as a corporate body. There are things done and left undone that we all are in need of God's grace for. If we confess that sin, God is faithful and just to forgive us, to grant us God's peace. Let us join together, for we know that nothing is able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ. Let us in freedom confess the wrong we have done. Will you join with me? Gracious God, our sins are too heavy to carry, too real to hide, and too deep to undo. Forgive what our lips tremble to name, what our hearts can no longer bear, and what has become for us a consuming fire of judgment. Set us free from a past that we cannot change, open to us a future in which we can be changed, and grant us grace to grow more and more into your likeness and image through Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Let us in this silence give God our own confessions. Amen. Jesus said to them, Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. Friends, believe this good news of the gospel. of the early church can be a model for us all. Today's New Testament reading is one example of the prayers of the early believers not long after Pentecost. Peter and John have just been released after they were arrested for preaching about Christ. A reading from the New Testament Acts chapter 4 verses 23 through 31 which may be found in the New Testament on page 114 in your pew Bible. After they were released, they went to their friends and reported what the chief priest and the elders had to say to them. When they heard it, they raised their voices together to God and said, Sovereign Lord, who made the heaven and the earth 
the sea, and everything in them. It is you who said by the Holy Spirit, through our ancestor David, your servant, why did the Gentiles rage and the peoples imagine vain things? The kings of the earth took their stand, and the rulers have gathered together against the Lord and against his Messiah. For in this city, in fact, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the peoples of Israel, gathered together against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed to do whatever your hand and your plan had predestined to take place. And now, Lord, look at their threats and grant to your servants to speak your word with all boldness while you stretch out your hand to heal and signs and wonders are performed through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. When they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God with boldness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
come down this way. I even brought the children with me today. Come on down, let's sit on the floor around this chair here. Come on, let's sit on down here. Sit on down here. Sit right down here. Rolling, come on down right here. Come on. Yeah, come on right down here. That's good. That's good. Come on up right up here, Rolling. I need your help. Come on down here. Hey there, Henry. Hey. Come on. Get up close. Come on, get up close. Hey there. Get there, Jane. Everybody's coming on in. And this, is, this is Rolling. You know, I wanted to uh, talk to you guys today a little bit. I wanted to talk to you today. And I want to... Let me out of here! Well, Sylvester, I wasn't going to introduce you yet. Why not? My name is Sylvester and I came for a purpose. This is Sylvester. Yes, I'm Sylvester. I'm a church dog. What are you doing, Sylvester? What are you doing? I'm sniffing these folks. I smell something. I smell something here. I smell something. Mm, I really smell something good right here. Mm, I, I even smell something. Sylvester, so, we're not here to smell everybody. We're here to talk about prayer. That's what I smell. I smell prayer. I knew I smell prayer. I, I don't think you smell prayer. I know I smell prayer. I'm a church dog. I can smell prayer. I smell a lot of it right up there. I smell a lot of it over here. I bet she prays a lot. What do you think? Well, Sylvester, we're going to talk about prayer. If you can just wait a minute, okay? Okay, I'm going to be quiet. Let's help Sylvester learn a little bit about what prayer is. Um, have you guys ever heard of prayer before? What, what do you think prayer might be? How about talking to God? Listening to God? Looking for God? I like to look for things. Looking for God would be good. Looking for God, talking to God, listening to God. Where do you where do you hear about prayer? Have you guys where could you tell Sylvester you've heard about prayer before? Has anybody ever heard of prayer before? Where have you heard about it? Yes, and where else? Here. In the Bible we hear about it. Jesus talks about it too. Jesus talks about prayer. And the the, the Bible tells us that. God always listens to us in prayer. And if we pray according to his will, he answers our prayers. We can listen to him. Now, how, do, how can you pray? Yeah, how can you pray? If I can't sniff it out, how can you pray? How do you pray? Does anybody know how to pray? Has anybody ever prayed before? How have you prayed? Have you prayed with your eyes closed? Have you prayed with your eyes open? You can pray with your eyes open. You can pray with your eyes closed. You can pray by yourself. By yourself. And you can also pray with other people. In fact, you can even pray with your hands up like this, which we're going to do in just a minute. So let's see if Sylvester remembers the things about prayer. Sylvester, we're going to give you a test now to see if you were listening. What do you think prayer might be? It smells really good. No, we didn't say anything about it smelling good. We said that prayer is talking to God and listening to God. We learn about it in the Bible and from Jesus. And we can pray all kinds of different ways. Well, I think I have a little bit of it, but I really think I can smell it in here. I really think I can smell prayer. I can smell some right there, right there. Right there. Well, whether you smell it or not, we're not going to argue. We're going to try to have a prayer ourselves. And we're going to stand up. And we're going to say a prayer. I'm going to say a, a, a line, and then you and Sylvester are going to say a line. Will you help me do that? And this is going to be different. Stand up, stand up right here. Come in close. We're going to pray with our eyes open. Come in close. She'll be fine. Come in close. We're going to lift our hands up. Lift your hands up like this. And you, you're going to have to be very energetic. You have to be very energetic. You can look at that top of the church, stained glass windows, you're looking at the heavens. Repeat after me. Dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. They really are a quiet bunch, Rick. I don't know if they can talk any louder or not. Can you talk louder than that? Thank you for our blessings. Thank you for our blessings. Thank you for prayer. Thank you for prayer. 
Help us always to remember. Help us always to remember. We can pray anytime. 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 Anywhere. Any day. Any day. Amen. Thanks for letting Sylvester help out today. Thank you for letting me come. Thank you. You're going back now. Thank you very much. everyone and thank you choir it's one of my favorites appreciate that the gospel reading for today is Matthew 6 9 through 13 and it's found in the New Testament on page 5 it's in your pew Bible if you want to follow along this scripture is often called the Lord's Prayer but it can also be a pattern for our prayers we should praise God pray his work in the world pray for our daily needs, and pray for help in our daily struggles. Matthew 6, 9 through 13, and I'm using the RSV. Jesus is sharing with his disciples, and when you pray, say, Our Father in heaven, 
hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. So I'm a little humbled to be in this spot this morning, sharing my view from the pew. When Beverly asked me to do this, I hesitated and I said, well, let me pray about it and I'll get back to you. And I did just that. I prayed about it and I did feel the Lord nudge me in the direction of saying yes. So I emailed her and agreed, not knowing at all what my topic would be this morning. So I first want to tell you how I finally decided on the topic of prayer. As I said, I had no idea when I told Beverly yes that I, what I'd be sharing with you this morning, so I began to pray about it. It took a little longer to be nudged towards the topic, and in the meantime, I found myself praying, and I began to notice prayer all around me. And here's what I mean. <clears throat> I've been attending a Bible study for the last 15 years. We share prayer concerns in the beginning, have our lesson, and then pray around the circle for each other's concerns. Our prayers are very specific, and we pray for each other throughout the week. I can tell you it is an awesome thing to pray for others and to know that others are praying for you. The needs among those in my Bible study group probably reflect the needs here in this sanctuary or the streets of Chattanooga or beyond. Prayers for family, illness of friends or family, needs of elderly parents, fear, job, church concerns, personal requests for wisdom and patience, but also prayers of praise, praise for time spent with family and friend, praise for an answered prayer, a good medical test result, a safe trip, unexpected blessings, and so much more. I thought about all those prayers over the years, and I was awed. But beside the prayers at my Bible study, there are other examples and experiences where prayer was all around me. Mealtime. Praying with grandchildren, praying over the phone with a friend, and of course, praying in church, just to name a few. My point is this. You would think the Lord would have nudged me then to focus on the topic of prayer for today. No, I didn't even think about prayer as my topic. I was actually entertaining some other ideas. Now, it's possible that he was nudging me and I wasn't paying attention, but as often happens, the Lord catches you when you are most unaware, and when he does, the results can be overwhelming, and in my case, a little bit funny. So remember, I've been praying as to what to share with you this morning, and others were praying too. And it seemed that prayer was all around me, but I didn't even consider prayer for my topic. So a few weeks ago, after agreeing to share, I took our dog to the vet for her yearly checkup. We have an Australian Shepherd, her name is Tonks. If you're a Harry Potter fan, you'll get the name. Anyway, as I'm driving her to this appointment, I pray, not say, but pray a simple, not world-changing, really very self-centered prayer. Lord, let the waiting room be empty when we get there. The reason for this prayer? Tonks likes to play and likes to meet the other pets, and it can be a nuisance for me and not everyone wants your dog to greet them. I just wanted to avoid it. So I offer this, as I said, very self-centered prayer. I got to the vet's office, no animals, waited five minutes and was called back. I sat in the room thinking about all I had to do the rest of the day, and it hit me. There were no animals in the waiting room. Ever had a prayer answered, and you didn't even notice till later? So I said, thanks, Lord, and the words were barely out of my mouth before it just came to me. Hey, Suzanne, prayer, that's the topic for Sunday the 18th. And there in the room waiting for the vet, the ideas poured out of my head, not totally organized, but so prolific that I had to take out my cell phone 
And I began to text myself a message so I could remember all the ideas related to prayer that were filling my head. I typed before they came and got my dog, and I continued to type on the phone while she was gone. Words, phrases, situations, scripture, people, events, and more, all about the topic of prayer. I sat there and kind of chuckled to myself. God wants us to pray, even if it's about things that seem unimportant, like vet waiting rooms being empty. But please hear this. What I remember as I sat there, and I want what, what I want you to think about today, is not so much my prayer, but the act of reaching for prayer in situations that is important. Let me say it again. It is the act of reaching for prayer in our lives, in all situations, that is important. And it is the greatest wireless connection ever. The God of the universe wants us to reach out and connect with Him. That connection is called prayer. So if the act of reaching for prayer in all situations is important, how do we develop or cultivate that behavior? To have an active, to have an active prayer life, you have to have an active prayer life. By that, I mean you need to, pray, need to pray regularly. We all know there is so much that we can pray about. But it still begs the question, how do we get this active prayer life? I will say this, it's always good to be around praying people. People who believe in the power of prayer. And one of the best places to find active prayer is in church. I knew with this topic I was going to have to narrow the focus down because the information on prayer is endless. So now my prayer became, what should my focus on prayer be on August the 18th? I waited, and then I just trusted and proceeded. Once I did, well, remember those notes and ideas that I told you I texted myself in the vet's office that day? They became the basis for what I'm about to share with you. I narrowed my view down on prayer to three areas. And that is what I'm going to share with you this morning as my view from the pew. First, the example of Jesus and his prayer life. Second, what some individuals have said or written about prayer. And I'm going to admit up front, I picked those who have had an impact on my faith and my prayer life. And finally, I'll share an approach to prayer that I found very helpful and meaningful in my life. Then I have a challenge for all of us. So let's take a look at the prayer life of Jesus. If you want to follow his example, then we have to examine his prayer life. For today, I'm going to summarize Jesus' prayer life this way. One, Jesus prayed for others. Matthew 19, 13. Then the little children were brought to Jesus for him to place his hands on them and pray for them. Two, Jesus prayed with others. Luke 9:28. About eight days after Jesus said this, he took Peter, John, and James with him and went up on a mountain to pray. Three, Jesus prayed alone. Luke 5, 15, and 16. Yet the news about him spread all the more so that the crowds of people came to him and to be healed of illnesses. But Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. And four, Jesus prayed for himself. Matthew 26, 39. And going a little further, he fell on the ground and prayed, saying, My Father, if it is possible, may this cup, which was the cross, be taken from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. So there you have it. Make a practice of following this example. First, praying for others. Be aware of those around you and make a point to pray for them. I once worked with an individual who taught me this aspect of praying for others. Whenever someone would share with this person a concern or a situation, sometimes it was personal and sometimes it was professional, she would really listen to what they were saying. And then she would say, do you want me to pray about that? Because if you want me to pray about that, I will. Now usually the person had to wait for giving their response because that's not ex what they expected to hear. But the answer was always yes. Then my friend did pray for them, and she would follow up with that individual. It is amazing the effect it can have on relationships when you are praying for someone and they know it. 
I've tried to incorporate this in my daily life with friends and family. If someone knows you're praying for them, there is this connection that I call a God thing. So like Jesus, pray for others, and when possible, be specific. Call them by name. And remember, there are people all around us that are standing in the need of prayer. Second, praying with others. We read about Jesus doing this a lot in Scripture. Do we realize how blessed we are because we can freely pray and worship? Not so for many people around the world. We have opportunities every Sunday to pray together as a congregation. Sometimes this can become kind of mindless reciting, but if we focus on what we're saying together, the prayer of confession or the Lord's Prayer, or if we really listen to the prayers for the people or the words from the anthem, we are praying together. But we also pray together during Sunday school, at our circle meetings, during session and choir practice, lunch after church, and then away from church before meals with family and friends and as we travel and many other times. Never underestimate the power of praying with others. Our shared prayer life spills over into our fellowship and connects us on a much deeper level. So like Jesus, pray with others. Jesus also prayed alone. His example is so clear. When things got crazy for him, and they really did, he withdrew to be alone and pray. We need our long prayer time too. For some, it's a regular time of day. For others, it may be as needed. But if we are to cultivate a prayer life, it is good to set aside time every day to pray. A daily devotional can be helpful with developing your practice of daily prayer. Nothing beats the Bible, reading it and praying it. Make time like Jesus did to pray alone. Before I retired, I found that praying on the way to and from work was a good alone prayer time for me. At work and at home, I kept visual reminders. If you've been to my house, you know that my refrigerator has lots of pictures, but sandwiched between these pictures are visual reminders of prayer. Jesus understood the need to pray alone. In this hectic culture we live in, the only way to do that is to carve out time during the day to be alone with God. One of my favorite scriptures is Psalms 46.10, Be still and know that I am God, and it is visible on my refrigerator. It is a verse that calls us to prayer. Every part of it speaks to us about God and spending alone time with Him. Listen to this psalm. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am. Be still and know. Be still. Be. Praying alone, like Jesus, allows us to be still and connect with God, the great I am. So like Jesus, take time to pray alone. Finally, Jesus prayed for himself. It is okay to do this. True, it should not always be your first approach with God, but God wants us to talk to Him and share with Him, and yes, ask Him. Yes, He already knows, but why should that change anything when it comes to me praying for myself? The connection between God and me is made more real and deeper. He is listening, and who of us doesn't want someone to listen to our deepest concerns and needs? It builds trust, and all relationships are built on trust. So trust God and tell him your needs and your hurts. He's listening. So if you really want an active prayer life, one thing you can do is try following Jesus' example. Pray for others, pray with others, pray alone, and pray for yourself. Jesus did. Point two. A few weeks ago, David shared with us stories about individuals that helped to shape his perspective on church and faith. So I'm going to share with you a little about some folks, as I said earlier, my favorites, what they have written and said about prayer. <clears throat> C.S. Lewis. Most folks are aware of the Narnia series, especially The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, and maybe even Mere Christianity or Screwtape Letters. They're all written by Lewis. His writings have helped me in so many ways, but especially in my understanding of faith. C.S. Lewis spent a large part of his life as an atheist. When he became a Christian, he used his gifts and his academic abilities to make a case for Christ and Christianity. 
Once someone asked him about prayer, does prayer really change anything? He answered, it changes me. It is so true. If you pray and connect with God on a regular basis, it will change you. And that change will affect how you live and how you pray. Another way of saying it is this. Once a man was asked, what did you gain from regularly praying to God? And the man replied, nothing. But let me tell you what I lost. Anger, ego, greed, depression, insecurity, fear of death. Sometimes the answers to our prayer is not gaining, but losing, which ultimately is the gain. And there's Dietrich Bonhoeffer. He's quoted on the front of the bulletin this morning. He was a German pastor, theologian, and anti-Nazi dissident who was arrested in prison because of his opposition to Hitler. He was executed at Flossenburg concentration camp on April the 9th, 1945, just as the Nazi government was collapsing. His last words tell us so much about him. We know from witnesses that he led a worship service in the cell that morning and prayed before his execution. That's the power of a life of prayer. Bonhoeffer wrote many books and essays. He wrote a book titled Psalms, the Prayer Book of the Bible. In this book, he guides the Christian to the scriptures for lessons on how to pray. If you were here the Sunday that Jim Davenport gave the message, Finding Middle Sea, you know how the Psalms are a rich treasury of prayers that are part of God's Word. Bonhoeffer knew this, and I believe the Psalms gave him much comfort on April 9, 1945. If you're not sure of how or what to pray, turn to the Psalms. Pick one. Pray it to the Lord. Try using your name. For example, the Lord is... Suzanne Shepherd, I shall not want. Or, the Lord is Suzanne's light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Try it sometime. When you do this, the Psalms become very personal. Better yet, do like Jim suggested. Find a Psalm that really speaks to you and memorize it. That way it is always there for you to pray. Bonhoeffer knew the power of praying scripture and trusting God. How else could he have said the following to those around him that morning as he was being led out by the guards to be hanged? And I quote, This is the end. For me, the beginning of life. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, his witness and writings continue to touch generations. About Tim Keller, he's a present-day pastor, theologian, and like Lewis, a Christian apologist. Keller is the founding pastor of Redeemer Presbyterian Church in New York City. He has written a book on prayer titled, Prayer, Experiencing Awe and Intimacy with God. One of his statements about prayer should speak to all of us, and here it is. I quote, In short, God will either give us what we ask for or give us what we would have asked for if we knew everything he knows. Let me say that again. In short... God will either give us what we asked for or give us what we would have asked for if we knew everything he knows. That's Tim Keller. Earl Palmer, also a Presbyterian minister, retired now from University Presbyterian Church in Seattle. I'm really not sure if this is his quote or a quote he used related to prayer, but it stayed with me, so I'm going to give him the credit. And here it is. If you only pray when you're in trouble, then you're in trouble. Let me say it again. If you only pray when you're in trouble, then you're in trouble. Then there's music. The words to hymns and songs, even secular ones, can become our prayers. Just like the light that streams through our beautiful rose windows that Pete told us about, music can enlighten us and move us to pray. And then there are two novels. This Present Darkness, whose title comes from Ephesians 6.2, which was written in 1986 by Frank Peretti. It changed my view on several things, one of them being the power and importance of prayer, but especially prayer by the individual. As we sit here today, the prayers of individuals present and those in the past are affecting this church. God has been answering prayers that were uttered decades, even centuries ago. Remember, 
Jesus prayed for you and me a long time ago. In John 17, Jesus is praying for his disciples and for future believers. And in verse 20, he says, My prayer is not for them alone, his disciples. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. That for those is Jesus praying for you and me. And most people think the What Would Jesus Do movement is a recent development. But the wording has been around for over a hundred years. Charles Sheldon, a minister, used it in his 1897 novel, In His Steps. In the novel, the minister challenges his congregation to live for an entire year by prayerfully asking themselves when dealing with situations, what would Jesus do? Several from the congregation take up the challenge, and it changes their lives and their witness. The basic message from these individuals in these books is this. As believers, we should be praying. And finally, my third point. Let me share an approach to prayer that changed my life. I was in a Bible study in college, and one night the leader said, if you're not sure how to pray, all right, or if you find yourself getting off track, yes, or your thoughts wondering, that's me, just use the ACTS model, A-C-T-S. And here it is. A, start your prayer with adoration for God. Praise Him, acknowledge who He is and what He has done. Move to C, confession. Be specific, name the things you are confessing. Don't just say, forgive me, think about it. Name it and claim it. He knows already, but why saying it to God and you telling Him that, why would you not? It makes the it of what we've done very real. Next, move to T, thanksgiving. Give thanks, starting with thankfulness for the sins, for the forgiveness of those sins that you just mentioned. Les called it gratitude. But again, be specific with your thanks. Name the blessings and the ways God has been involved in your life. None of us really has to look too far to be thankful, so express that thanks to God. And finally, S, for supplication. This is where you ask God. Now here's what I've learned. If you do ACT, adoration, confession, and thanksgiving, by the time you get to supplication, S, the asking part, the requests you make have often been changed or revised. And here's why. The wireless connection is two-way. And the Lord works in our heart and our mind as we pray to bring us to ask according to his will. So there you have it, my view from the pews on prayer. Three points. One, think about Jesus and his prayer life and seek to model it. Pray with others. Pray for others. Pray alone and pray for yourself. Two, recognize that there are people, writers, music, books, puppets, and many other things that can encourage us to pray. And finally, try the ACTS model, adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication. Jesus wants prayer and reaching for prayer to be a part of our everyday life. It was for him. So I have a challenge for us all. As our church searches for new leadership, as we move forward through witness and mission in this community, as we individually seek to give of our time and talent to the work of the Lord and to grow in our own personal faith, let's join together in prayer. Are we willing to commit time every day, once a week, join with a prayer group, or even lead a group of prayer? A prayer foundation for the church is so important. Let's do it together. Prayer is the greatest wireless connection ever. As a congregation, let's stand, get on our knees, lift our hands, sing, bow our heads, close our eyes, open our eyes, speak the words out loud or silently. But let's begin a life of personal and corporate prayer. But really, it's not about the position of our bodies that matters when we pray. It's the position of our hearts. So here's the closing. The God of the universe, the creator, the one who loves us more than we could ever imagine, wants you and me to reach for the greatest wireless connection ever, prayer. It's always available, and he's always listening. Amen.
so let's reach for prayer right now if you'll join me in the prayers of the people and I'm going to use the Acts model as I just mentioned I will pause at Thanksgiving and supplication for you to offer your own silent prayers and then we'll close together as we do every Sunday with the Lord's Prayer please join me in prayer Lord you are the creator of all we praise and adore your holy name. Heaven and earth declare your glory. Gracious God, earlier in this service, we confessed to you the heaviness of our sins. Then and now we acknowledge our need for your forgiveness. Your love and forgiveness sets us free to be your people in this world. Our shepherd, each of us has so much to be thankful for in our lives. We are so rich in blessings. And we pause now to silently name some of those blessings and thank you for them. We pray, O oh God, for Second Presbyterian Church, its future and its mission. We ask that you would be those in our congregation and around the world who are hurting who are grieving, who are fearful, homeless, lost, or alone. We pause now for each of us to silently offer up prayers for others. Lord, you know our hearts. Continue to work in each of our lives. Make us more like you as we pray together, gather the prayer you gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you so much. The first words of the Bible are about God's gift to us of a beautiful creation. <coughs> Let us gather our gifts together and offer them to God in gratitude and praise so that this church will continue to grow and be a blessing to the world.
join with me in our prayer of dedication. Accept the gifts of our hands and the thankfulness of our hearts. Our voices are all lifted in praise to you, God of our life. Amen. Life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who make the journey with us. So be swift to love, and make haste to be kind. And the blessings of God, who made us, loves us, and travels with us, be with you and me, now and forever.
that too.